What is up, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of the Flagjack All-Time List. Yes, we're uh, trying something new. We're uh, going to keep going with our podcast and everything, but tonight we're going to do a, our first list. It's going to be uh, our top, what is it, seven? Our top seven uh, list of Batman. We each have very different rankings. So yes. Very different. Like, dramatically different. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... How about we get started? I'll let you go first. Uh, we're going to start from the bottom. Okay. And uh, who's your number seven? My number seven is Adam West. And reason being, I don't have like a major like connection with that version of Batman. Um, I saw it here and there, but I never really delved too deep into it. So that's yeah. my reason for that being number seven. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. You're number seven. All right, my number seven would have to be, uh, oh, that's right, so, my number seven would have to be George Clooney. Um, <laughs> if for nothing else, at least the bat nipples. <laughs> um, that's, the, that's the, probably the main thing. Yeah, well, that, if we're talking, like, levels of corniness, if you compare it to the Adam West, I think it was just as bad, if not worse at certain points. Yeah, because I think... Joel Schumacher was like kind of going for that campy tone, but for that time, like people weren't wanting to see that type of Batman. Well, you know why, right? Why? So when they made uh, Batman Returns, mm -hmm. they had a big deal with uh, McDonald's to sell their toys. It was all about toys, wasn't it? It was all about toys. And so when they made Batman Returns, it was mm -hmm. a lot different than the first Batman. They couldn't market it the same way because you have penguin who's throwing up like black sludge out of its mouth yeah. so like the toys that came out from mcdonald's were nothing like the movie right and so and they couldn't be yeah so there was yeah. a lot of uh, backlash there and so they were like we'll give it to joel schumacher and the toys galore it was yeah. ridiculous yeah different kinds of bat suits different kinds of robins bat credit vehicles. card in the movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, oh i mean it's, it's not as that is like is bat the, shark repellent yeah that, but <laughs> the George Clooney one is that the one where they're surfing through the air after that plane blows up or whatever uh no that's, that, Batman that, Rob. that's Val Kilmer yeah uh the, with uh Two-Face yeah okay yeah. that's the, the one yeah. where they're in that like flying safe yeah yeah um so what would your number uh six be uh, my number six is gonna be George Clooney okay so and just for the simple fact that the movie was trash <laughs> and he I don't know it just didn't work I think, so you just gotta, I think it just automatically goes on the bottom of everybody's list, honestly. It's so weird, though, because, like, if you think George Clooney, like, especially around that time of his acting career, he he looked like a Playboy billionaire yeah. kind of guy. And he like, was a huge box office draw. Oh, yeah. Like, it was fam. He was he was huge name. He was a ladies' man. Like, yeah. he was what you would picture Bruce Wayne being mm. like. And it just didn't, didn't come together. No, it didn't translate. Yet. And honestly, if he had a better script and a suit with no nipples, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> yeah. But who knows? Who really knows? Yeah, that, that ship sailed a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> so uh, my number six is uh, Adam West. Okay. I grew. I have a little bit of nostalgia for it because I grew up watching it at my uh, great-grandparents' house every now and then. And while super corny, as a little kid, it's fantastic. Oh yeah, for sure. Growing up now, I'm I am sad that Adam West is no longer around and everything. But like, I also got to enjoy him in other roles like Mayor West and uh, Family Guy yeah. and stuff like that. So like that was enjoyable. And I don't think it's super like it c could rank higher if it maybe went a little bit longer too because it only went two seasons because they just decided to just destroy de destroy the set mm -hmm. to where they weren't giving in it given any more funding so right yeah. um other than that i mean he i i haven't seen the movie either so mm -hmm. but going from there you're number five number five we are going up to val kilmer which was a step up from george clooney and i think if if he was given the right script direction and all that he could have been a very good Batman, Bruce Wayne. Yes, I. He, he was probably the best thing about the movie. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Because like Chris O'Donnell was, he was an okay Robin. I'm not gonna bash him, but he 
I, I think Val Kilmer was definitely the key to that one, and I honestly mm -hmm. feel like that was one of the last movies that I remember that was decent that he was in. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, after that, I think he had that Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Robert Downey Jr. And that's where his career... Yeah. Have you ever seen that Key and Peele sketch? No. -uh. Where they're like, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is the best movie ever made, because uh -huh. it's, you have the trajectories from two different amazing actors. You have Val Kilmer who's up here and declining. You have Robert Downey Jr. who's down here and rising and they meet at Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. That's why it's the best <laughs> movie ever made. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever saw that one. I haven't actually. Oh, okay. Um, I just that, uh, oh, are you saying the sketch you haven't seen? Yeah, the sketch, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the sketch is funny. I've never seen Kiss Kiss Bang That's Bang. a good movie. I, I, I haven't watched that one. Yeah. Um, so, I think that I actually have the exact same number five. I think this is the only one that we line up on. <laughs> yeah, that is the only one. <laughs> um, same reasons, like, I, he could have done a lot. With a better script, he could have done better. Mm -hmm. um, there are definitely certain points in that movie I really enjoy where I feel like he got the character off really well. Mm -hmm. um, especially, like... Even though I'm tired of seeing Batman Origins, <laughs> yeah, uh, his origin felt like the truest part of the character. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for him. Yeah, yeah. Even though, you no, know, he was the best thing about the movie, and there's really not much else you can say, really. Yeah, it's it's a low point. Yeah, it's I mean, point. Jim Carrey was good in it. I enjoyed him as the Riddler. Did you really? I did. As a kid, I did, yeah. And I, I actually seen it in a little while, so maybe that's why I'm still holding on to that. But yeah. I feel like I wasn't too big on Two-Face in that movie. Yeah. I think that's what drug it down for me. While I do love Tommy Lee Jones, I just, I'd rather see him as, uh, what is it, K in uh, <laughs> Men in Black. Men in Black, yeah. So, I, I think he's better in those kinds of roles, especially when he plays the roles where he's, uh, older version of, uh, what's his name? Josh Ball. Yeah, Josh Ball. Yeah. Those they should go get together. Well, <laughs> and they've done that in two movies now, haven't they? Them two? Uh-huh. Uh, Men in Black 3. Yeah. And then I believe, uh, No Country for Old Men. Was he the younger version? Uh -huh. Josh Ball was he? Oh, God, I had to wait rewatch the movie. It's been a while. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. If I'm wrong, call me out. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um... So your number, what was that, four? It'd be number five. Number five, I'm bad at counting. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right, number no, four. I am good at One counting. <laughs> I'm bad at counting. <laughs> um, it would have to be Kevin Conroy. And even though it's not a uh, live action, it is the animated series, which was super iconic. Iconic, huge, still very watchable today. Yes. And he is like, when you think, I think when a lot of people think of Batman, they automatically like put his voice to it. Oh yeah. So yeah, he very like he defined Batman in a way. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. Especially for uh, like our generation oh, growing yeah. up with that cartoon, it's yeah. fantastic. There was uh, that video game too. Um, I forgot what it's called, but it's based on the animated series. Oh, uh, I oh, I think seen. I know which one you're talking about. At the beginning, you have to save a girl. She like strapped to a bomb or something. I can't remember. I I, I, I do know which one. Not not Dark Tomorrow. I'll have to look it up and show you. Did you know that he's actually the voice for all the Arkham games too? Yes. And I'm gonna look that game up. One day we'll have to do a uh, Joker video. Yeah. And it'll be a little shorter, <laughs> but uh, still just as good because Mark Hamill ranks up there pretty high for me. Um, so my number four, and this is where me and him really, really start to veer off, is uh, Ben Affleck. I. Enjoyed him. I think he was probably the best version of Bruce Wayne that we had. Um, but I, I don't think that he was done justice with the scripts, with going back and forth between directors and everything. That whole Joss Whedon thing with uh, Justice League really screwed him over. That's one, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Uh, oh, Batman Vengeance. Yes. I did play that one. I rented that one a few times with Black <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a <laughs> lifetime ago. That's yeah. a, those are like, those were like Friday nights we were spent. Oh yeah. I remember getting uh, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the video game. Like, yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but like I was saying, like, he got massively screwed over. And like, he even came out this week and said that 
he had the script for the Batman movie. It was supposed to actually come out last year. Yeah. And he had showed it to a bunch of people and they were all really happy with it. They were like, dude, this is actually really good. They're like, but I don't think it's good for like your mental health if you keep doing this based because off of- Drinking problem. Yeah. They were like, you're gonna end up drinking yourself to death. So he's like, uh, at that point, I'll wash my hands of it. They already brought in Matt Reed. And the uh, production so. of Justice League didn't help it either. <sighs> dude. I, I was listening to something today on uh, Walk Culture. Oh, okay. And they said there is five hours of unused film. like Or like, not unused, like total film that was shot, there's five hours. Yeah, like, of the BBS? Yeah. And it, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, not Justice BBS? League. Oh, Justice League. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Because I know BBS was like four hours total. Yeah. Which is, that's not a good thing, really. No, but I think it just shows how much Zack Snyder wanted it to be a two-part movie. Yeah, and that and that kind of helps the case of the uh, release the Snyder Cut yes. deal. I really... And he actually came out and said that everything's done pretty much except some of the VFX stuff. Yeah, which so. honestly, dude, they could re-release it in theaters and make all of their money back. It makes dope. Put the, yeah. Because of how many people are like putting that hashtag out there. Well, I guess there's a whole bunch of scenes uh, with uh, Dark Side just gone. Yeah. Yeah. So, potentially that could, even though nothing would come from it, and it might be a little hard to get some people into the theaters. I still want to see. I would buy a ticket. I'm pretty I'm sure um, Stefan Wolf looked different too in the uh, in his version. It well, was he did that deleted scene from BBS. Yeah, he looked like um, Lex Luthor, kind of all metal. He he. Well, I, I think that was a lot of the. Uh, Material that like came up from the ground. Uh, but I, excuse me. Um, I would hope it would look a little different. I think he had a much different and at least consistent vision for what that movie would have been. Yeah, it would have been dark, like yeah. BBS Man of Steel. Well, Which, then you're missing Green Lantern in that movie too. So yeah, and there was a, uh, I'll have to find it, a fan made poster for Justice League, mm -hmm. the Zack Snyder cut, and it had um, Green Lantern and Martian Manhunter. I, so I heard, yeah. did you hear about the uh, cut scene of Martian Manhunter? In Justice League? Oh, there, he, he was actually in it. Yep. Oh, shit. So, um... I gotta find that poster. It is... So Martha Wayne... Or, not Martha Wayne. Martha uh, Kent. Uh, at the end of the movie, after she gets done talking to... Uh, Lois Lane. Uh-huh. Lois Lane walks away and, like, gets out of sight, and then she turns into Martian Manhunter. And then he turns back into the general the, uh, from Man of Steel. Okay. So basically saying that he's been in the universe since Man of Steel. Because it, yeah, he's supposed to be that general, right? That's well, so him. in the comics, he's uh, John Johns. So it's a little different. It'd be a little bit retconning, but I mean, okay. it would still work. I can't find the poster. I wish I could. Um, and then going on from there, uh, what would your number three be? My number three would be probably a lot of people's top choice, like Christian Bale. And I, I'm just gonna cut in real quick because that's also my number three. Oh. So we'll line up on we we line up on two: Val Kilmer, yeah. Christian Bale, and that's it. Um, I 100% agree. Like he was fantastic, and his dedication to the role was insane. And he had the best movies out of any of them. Uh, as a franchise. As a I'd franchise, say, yeah. yeah, and probably. What people will consider the best Batman movie, Dark Knight. Dark Knight, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think more of that is not so much to his credit as it is as uh, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, yeah. yeah. So, and Chris Nolan. Yeah. <sighs> Anything Chris Nolan puts his hands on is gold. I'm looking forward to Tenant like yeah. crazy. Uh, another Robert Pattinson movie, yeah. which we're gonna have to end up redoing this list in a little over a year. Yep. So. I'm actually looking forward to that so much. They keep if he's not stuff. my top choice, I'll be I'll be disappointed. I would I'll have to say the same yeah. thing. I expect big things. So. Yes. Please. <laughs> um, <laughs> deliver. It, he has a lot of dedication, like especially uh, uh, Christian Bale. I mean, um, has a lot of dedication, and I was surprised with what he did because he went straight from the machinist to gaining like 80 pounds of straight muscle. Batman Begins. Yes, which is absolutely insane. But even then, he still looks small for a Batman. Yeah, like I say so. weirdly, but like with a shirt off, he looks jacked. But like in the suit, he looks small. 
Yeah, the suit makes him look smaller than yeah. he probably is, but... Yeah. And that, that's the one thing that me and you both agreed on, that uh, Ben Affleck looked imposing. Like, he had that build where he looked like he would... He looked very, <laughs> like, wide and, like, blocky. Like, that workout montage oh, of him. Just hitting the tire. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like... I, I was actually really happy you got that, because... I, I honestly don't even remember, a, like, a montage like that in the... Christian Bale movies. There probably is one, but I can't think of it. And if so, Which it wasn't means, as iconic. Yeah, because we can't think of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. it. I remember him making a suit with a hammer and everything in the cave, but that's about it. Yeah. Um. So since we both pretty much lined up on that one, <laughs> who's your uh, number two? Uh, number two would be the OG, Michael Keaton. Okay. Yeah, that would be my second uh, choice. And it's crazy too, because back then when they cast him, like everyone, it was kind of like how Robert Pattinson's deal was. Everyone was kind of pissed off because Michael Keaton was basically like a comedic actor at that point. Yeah. That's what he was known for. And it's weird because there was a lot of back and forth of whether or not it would be him or Bill, <coughs> sorry, uh, Bill Murray, which is even Bill weirder. Murray? Yeah. I don't think I ever heard that one. He was, he was on uh, same casting and everything. Like, he was wow. that close. Like, it was either Bill Murray or Michael Keaton, and I'm, I'm happy they went with Michael Keaton. He didn't look anything like a Bruce Wayne that you see in the comics. No. But, yes. Yeah, when you, <laughs> see, when you see it, like, it works. And actually, uh, John Lithgow, I don't know if you know who he is. Yes, I love He was John supposed Lithgow. to be Joker for uh, Jack Nicholson. I also heard, so I heard that it was him... And then there was one more person that I would be excited to see as a Joker, even to this day. If you can give me Willem Dafoe as the Joker, I would lose my damn mind. Because that'd be a waste if they don't, like, they can now. I mean, like, even though he's, like, way older than Robert Pattinson, you can find a way to make it work. Like, well, all you have to do is, because, well, let's say, hypothetically speaking, that the Robert Pattinson movie is set in the 90s. Yeah jump forward to modern day, age up Robert Pattinson a little bit, make up, whatever. Yeah, because he's like, what, 21, 22 in the, late, in the 90s, probably? Probably. Like, he, he's just getting his grips, maybe like first year Batman, Batman year one type yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, looks like the suit's kind of rough. It's not really where it needs to be yet. Yeah. Um, and Alfred's going to be Big Al. Oh, dude, on a mechanic shop is, <laughs> in year one. It is going to be interesting seeing Andy Serkis. Like, I love him and what he does with characters, so seeing him be able to kind of twist that will be exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, how grounded this movie is going to be. Like, so far, like, from his costume, at least, the Batman costume, it oh. looks like it's going to be very grounded. Oh, yeah. It, it looks like there's a lot of thought put into... The costume alone tells a huge story, mm -hmm. so... It'll be interesting to see, like, like I've told you multiple times, like, I think it's just pre-Lucius Fox, and then maybe by the end of the movie, like, final... He has his official... Yeah, like, when he really has to fuck shit up, <laughs> he'll go and get the official suit. I'm curious and... to see if the whole movie takes place in his beginning stages, or if it's gonna time jump. I would... <sighs> see, and, like, I have no preference. I would love to say I would want one thing or the other, but, like, when it comes to Batman, craft a good story on there. Yeah, for sure. Um... So yeah, so your number two is Michael Keaton. My number two is Kevin Conroy. Um, All the way up to two. Yeah, I know, it's a big jump. Me and you, <laughs> I think you put Ben Affleck, or I put Ben Affleck where you put Kevin Conroy. And so it's like, yeah, almost, almost opposites. Um, I, A, playing the Arkham games really attached me to his voice. Especially after growing up with him in the animated series. Yeah. And then the pairing of him and Mark Hamill is perfect. Like, Gold. <laughs> I don't know how I would feel if the original cast, how I would feel about Kevin Conroy if the original casting of the Joker went through. Because it was originally supposed to be Tim Curry. Ooh. But he got sick. And he couldn't do it. So they were like, alright, we'll bring in Luke Skywalker to do it. And that is the only other role anybody knows Mark Hamill does. So he is the Joker. Oh, That's dude, a lot of people. Fantastic! Like that voice, you, you can close your eyes. You don't need to see a screen. It puts you right in it. Yeah. Um. You can kind of say that with like a Heath Ledger Joker too. Yeah. Um. 
I don't think you can so much say that with uh, Joaquin's Joker. I think his Too was early. much more physical. Yeah. Um, I think I think ten years down the road, I think that movie will still be talked about. And I think at that point, we'll they'll talk about him in that light. I think. Oh yeah. I and think, I've, especially from now on, that's what he's going to be known for, Joaquin. Oh, for the, and he's going to hate it. Yeah. He's already awkward as it is. Which, and, in a way, he should have known it was going to happen. Yes, especially if you look at the way Robert Downey Jr.'s careers went. If you look at Chris Evans, yeah. Chris Hemsworth, they don't get privacy anymore. And Yeah, because you can see like at the beginning of the press tour for Joker, he was like all into it. Oh, yeah. And the more he went on, he was just like less and less. Oh, like, yeah. After winning awards, he's like, I've, ar I've already said this a million times. Can you go away? Yeah. <laughs> um, but hopefully, I, I know he keeps saying that, uh, Kevin Conroy keeps saying that he's going away and he's done with Batman. All they have to do is bring him the right script and he comes back. Because he said that before the killing joke and he came mm -hmm. back for the killing joke. And yep. I'm like, just keep reeling him in. I'll be happy forever. Yeah. So, and the killing joke is kind of disappointing. Oh, one thing I will say though. If you haven't watched um, Yoga Hosers, and I know me and you have talked about this, yeah. there's a scene in there that makes me so fucking happy. So he goes into the convenience store. It's not like a spoiler, it's just a yeah. cool Easter egg. He goes into the convenience store to buy something, and the two girls, uh, Kevin Smith's daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter, yeah. are talking about like their periods or something. <laughs> and he has a little kid with him, and he's like, dude, like, kids need to chill out. He's like, sorry, and the kid has a R on his chest, <laughs> and he says, and he, in the Batman voice, he says, come on, Robin, let's get out of here, and I'm like, dude, like, nice. it, it, it almost looks weird coming out of his mouth, because you never see it, Yeah, but that dude, is, it's like magic. Right, right. So, uh, I think by narrowing it down, we know who your number one is, but, yeah. but it, it has to come out of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Number one is Ben Affleck. He was, to me, like, the perfect Bruce Wayne and the most physical Batman we've seen in a movie. Like, the way he, that warehouse scene, that was probably the best Batman okay. scene in cinema. That was the best Batman fight scene, period. Yes. That, yeah, that was like, I could rewatch that scene, like, over and over. Oh, no, 100%. Yeah. Like... The thought, that, the thought and the choreography that was put into that, excuse me, um, I wish that thought and choreography went into Justice League. Yeah. Or any other part of Batman vs Superman. Right, yeah, because the only time he was taken serious was in BBS, because in Justice League he was a joke. They used him as a punchline. I, and I blame Joss Whedon 120%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then in a BBS you can see a little bit of his detective side. They didn't like showcase it, but you can see yourself. Saw more than what you normally see. Yeah. And I really hope that's what we get from Patton, Pattinson. Yes. So that's the one thing I feel like we've always missed from a Batman movie is the actual like detective World's work. Detective. Yeah. It's not just something that was thrown at him, it's something that he has to earn. Yeah. So like to the point where like Ray Ghoul doesn't call him Batman. Like mm -hmm. he calls him Detective. Detective, yep. So I really, really hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I, I will agree with you that he was <coughs> definitely the best Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. um, fight wise, I think he had the best like fight scenes, and he was super passionate, and I did appreciate that. It just, I think the reason that he's so low for me is because of Justice League. If um, that okay. never existed, I'd agree. Okay. I, I don't say I, I can't agree because my number one is still my number one. Yeah, but he would be a lot higher. He probably would be my number two. So you don't have, well, you might have a little bit of a problem with uh, his killing deal. I do have a problem with that. Yeah, I just, um, I mean, they should have explained it more, but there's a scene where Alfred kind of alludes to why he does it, but they don't well, go into depth about it. That, that, that is a big thing to change. And I understand that, like, Zack Snyder's gone out and said, like, wake up, like, there's no way Batman's not going to end up killing people. Yeah, and plus and, this guy's been a Batman for, what, over 20 years? Yeah. And, and he's Broke killed down. Robin, Robin's dead, so he's like fed up with this shit. And that's the thing, all you have to do say. is say, hey, he broke down after Robin died. Yeah, or Alfred say like, hey, you're going over the edge. And yeah. then Bruce Wayne's like, well, they killed Robin and all this stuff. So. Yeah, so like, there's so many little touches that they can give that movie that can explain stuff to where I'm like, yes, he's killing people. Yeah. I'm okay with it in this universe, but like, yeah. 
I really hope that they don't do that with Robert Pattinson. Like, I, I, I hope that if they ever get to the point with Robert Pattinson, because, like, I'd be happy if they did, like, ten movies with Robert Pattinson. Oh, yeah. Um, He's young enough. Yeah, it would, be, it would be fantastic. And they, you could see the evolution of him getting Robin, and then getting the next Robin, and then all the way down to Tim Drake after Red Hood dies. And this like, could be the first, like, Batman franchise where you could see his whole life span. Dude. That'd be tight. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> um, but, like, if you could show him, like, getting close to the edge, but not crossing it because he has support systems. Because that's what he has, that's what he does. He yeah. has that moral because he rises that line. Yes. And so it would be like, that, that's the one thing that he always like fights against because like in the comics his biggest thing is like, if I cross the line I'm no better than the people I'm putting behind bars. Yeah. So. And he's supposed to be the op exact opposite of the Joker. Yeah. And they're so, like the same, but <laughs> What movie? <laughs> he's like, same, same, but different. Oh, the interview with James Franco. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, yeah, but they're supposed to be mirror opposites. Yeah. There's not supposed to be any overlap. You're not supposed to worry about whether or not Batman's gonna snap. And if you do, it needs to be, like, alternate universe stuff, like the Batman Who Laughs, like, fantastic version of, it's almost like an amalgam version of Batman and the Joker. Some continuity and make it to where he, like, plays with that line, but doesn't go over it. I'll be happy. And to be fair, in all the Batman movies, he's killed people. You need Whether, to watch Letter Kenny, dude. Indirectly or not, he's killed people in these movies. Oh, and <laughs> th there's no way you have one. Because, like, yeah. in, uh, you know, we'll just jump to it right now. My number one is Michael Keaton. But going from that point, Michael Keaton in, I think it's the second one, I think it's Batman Returns, drops a bomb down the clown's pants. He drops a bomb and then he lights some guy on fire with the exhaust in the Batmobile. Yeah, so like, he killed people, but it's the acknowledgement of it and the brutality of the way Ben Affleck did it. Yeah, he's like, straight uh, working like... Yeah, using actual like, guns. live rounds, and I'm like, no! Like, I love the way the Arkham Knight explained it, like the Batmobile having like, artillery, but it, it's all... Uh, rubber bullets. Mm. So it can't kill anybody. Even though it'll screw up pretty <laughs> like if you pay attention to the way some of the stuff happens in the game, like you kill plenty of people. Um like but Michael Keaton for me A OG. So it does make it hard to fight against the nostalgia feeling of that. Um B kind of that Robert Pattinson effect you were talking about where I, I was happy that he proved people wrong, mm -hmm. especially after, like I wasn't alive, neither of us were alive when that movie came out, no. um, either of them actually, um, but he did overcome a huge like typecasting yeah. to get to where he is. Yeah, and I think for Robert Pattinson we're going to have to wait until the movie comes out, well, people who haven't seen his independent movies, they're going to have to wait for the actual Batman movie to come out to make their case on it, because oh. all they know is Twilight. Oh yeah. Well, and, like, to that extent, like, I don't think people would enjoy Vulture as much if it wasn't for the fact he played Batman in the past. Yeah. And, or at least, I don't think people would have had the faith in him to do that. Yeah. And I think that was a big factor of him getting cast as well. Mm -hmm. Um, overall, he's a fantastic actor, and he, him and Jack Nicholson played very well together. Yeah, they did. So... I will always go Michael Keaton as my number one. Hopefully. Yeah. Until next year. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but we did have one more thing we wanted to discuss, and I think it's probably pretty obvious, mm. but favorite Batman movie. Yeah. Mine's a hot take, I guess. Uh, I would say it's a hot take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Batman versus Superman. I don't care what anybody says, like, I still, like, especially the Ultimate Cut. I was gonna say, three hour the Ultimate Cut, yeah. Three hour version's boss. Yeah. Like, I just... Zack Snyder tried to do something different with it. And there could have been more Superman in it, obviously. Oh, yeah. But, um... Especially explanation for the reasons they were fighting. Yeah, and how he knew his name. Yep. Call him Bruce at the end, like... How'd you know? I mean, like, that is the one thing that, like, in the comics, like, it, it's a dude with a famous face. Yeah. And Batman has, or uh, Superman has, like, x-ray vision. Yeah. So, like, that's explainable that way. But even then, you want a little bit more just, like, yeah. touches. Yeah. But, yeah, the only negative thing, well, there's there's a few negatives, honestly, but the main negative thing is Lex Luthor. 
And Martha. And the Martha thing. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind it as much as a lot of people do. I can get past I it. I don't think it's the most glaring uh, mistake they made in that movie. No. Lex Luthor was by far the worst. Especially the Jolly Rancher scene. Yeah. I hated that scene so much. Mm -hmm. It made me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as, like, Bat as far as Batman's concerned, like, his scenes in the movie, because it basically is a Batman movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the best About cinematic. 70%. Yeah, it's the best cinematic version of Batman. So that's why I kind of have that as my favorite one. It, it, if we're talking, like, cinematography and, like, uh, Choreography, I would agree. Mm -hmm. um, I still have to just go with 1989, though. Yeah. That the original Batman, Jack Nicholson, like, especially getting to see him fall into the bat of that, the bat of acid and everything. <laughs> right. You get a lot of the like classic, like weirdly comical bits, like the the acid flower, the yeah. all those stuff. The whole dancing through the museum and yes. spray paint and everything. Stuff that you can't even get a Heath Ledger to do that. You can't no. get, you couldn't even get Jared Leto to do that. No. <laughs> um, and I think potentially maybe you can get Joaquin to do it with his character. Like if he went that much further, but you'd have to have ways to explain certain yeah. things. Yeah, because you don't want to get too far outside of the uh, grounded in reality. Yeah. And like it was, it was cartoony, but it, fit itself into that world perfectly. Because it felt very like <sighs> New Yorkish, but at the same time like a like a super col colorful version of it that like anything can happen. It felt like you were living in a cartoon world. Yeah. So And that goes with Batman Returns too. Yes, no a hundred percent. A little darker but the yeah no I would 100% agree. Um, it's kind of crazy the tone change from movie to movie. Uh, not that it was nice to see a dark version of Batman <coughs> films, right after Adam West because that was the first dark version kind of. Mm -hmm. It was that and then the animated series. Yep, because the animated series came I believe very shortly after '92. Right? So yeah, so that'd be so, three. Right. Pretty much the same time as Batman Returns. I think Batman Returns and animated series were like a, a year yeah. apart or the same year. Yeah. Um, so that was the first dark version of Batman. Yeah. So, yeah, so ultimately for me it's because A, it's the first one I ever watched. Okay. And I just enjoy Michael Keaton, so. The first one I watched was Batman Returns. That was the first one. Okay. Days. Yeah. And see, like, I like that one. <laughs> Uh, Christopher Walken throws me off in that movie, dude. He does. <laughs> if it wasn't for him, I think I would enjoy that one more. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I, I can't say that about him in many movies. I think that's the only one where, like, his character didn't feel like it really fit to me. Oh, pudding. Yeah. Whereas, like, you could have just had the penguin, and I'd have been happy. But, yeah, for the most part, our, our list didn't line up. Uh, Not a whole lot. But... Two out of seven. Yeah, two out of seven ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, I'm sure we could find some lists where we don't uh, line up at all. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the nice thing about me and him. We're not going to sit here and try to kiss each other's asses to uh, <laughs> yeah. get the same scorecard. If we ever get the same scorecard, it's purely coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're going to keep trying to do these and try to roll these out. Yeah. And we'll get, we'll get some lists that... Have us go more in depth and stuff like that. And yeah. this is our first one to test it out, and about something that's kind of like near the and news dear right now too. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, that and it's something near and dear to my heart. Yeah, so. <laughs> for sure. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll uh, keep you guys updated on when we'll be uploading, and we'll uh, definitely always be filming our uh, podcast. So keep keep updated on those, yeah. and make sure to. Like us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for sure. Subscribe. Yep. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Anthony Stevens. Damon Layla. Peace.